to Washington, where the government shutdown is about to extend into a new year, and there really is no end in sight here. Some 420,000 government employees worked without pay last week, while 380,000 workers are furloughed. That means they're out of work without pay. Our White House correspondent, Tara Palmieri, has the latest. Tara, good morning to you. Good morning, Dan. We haven't seen or heard from the president since last week, but he's been busy blasting the Democrats on Twitter. And now White House officials say there's still no meeting on the books with Democratic leaders before they take control of the House later this week. With the government shutdown now entering its second week, sources tell ABC News President Trump is calling political allies and conservative pundits to reassure them he will not back down on his demand for a border wall. We need a wall. The president Sunday comparing his wall to the fence around the Obama's private home, tweeting, President and Mrs. Obama built has a 10-foot wall around their D.C. mansion compound. I agree, totally necessary for their safety and security. The U.S. needs the same thing. And the president's outgoing chief of staff, John Kelly, saying that the administration has long abandoned the idea of a solid concrete wall, telling the L.A. Times, quote, to be honest, it's not a wall. The president still says wall. Oftentimes, frankly, he'll say barrier or fencing. Now he's tended toward steel slats. The president also blaming Democrats for a tragedy at the southern border, claiming without any proof that it's their fault that two migrant children died in U.S. custody this month. In his first statement on their deaths, the president tweeting, any deaths of children or others at the border are strictly the fault of the Democrats. The president claiming the two children wouldn't have died if he was granted money for a wall. Democrats showing no sign of compromise on their current offer of roughly $1.3 billion for border security. We are not willing to pay $2.5 billion or $5 billion uh, in wasting taxpayer dollars on a ransom note because Donald Trump decided that he was going to shut down the government. Before lunch at the White House Sunday, the president's ally, Senator Lindsey Graham, saying don't expect the president to back down. President Trump is not going to walk away from this fight without border security funding, money for the wall, for lack of a better way of saying it. But it's unclear how this stalemate will end. Trump and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer and incoming House Speaker Nancy Pelosi haven't spoken to each other in 20 days. Sources say the president feels comfortable politically where he stands during the shutdown. He sees it as a loser for Democrats as they try to set the agenda in the new Congress. Dan? Tara, let me just ask you about uh, something, some news on another subject. Uh, Lindsey Graham coming out and speaking to the press after that lunch with the president. The president has taken a lot of heat from Senator Graham and others on both sides of the aisle for his decision recently to pull American troops out of Syria. Now Senator Graham says there's a pause. Dan, Senator Lindsey Graham came to the White House yesterday to make his case against pulling out the remaining 2,000 troops from Syria. And he said the president is willing to slow down the withdrawal. But a U.S. official warns that no plan is in place and at this point they see them withdrawing troops from Syria over the next few months. Dan? All right, Tara Palmieri at the White House, thank you very much. Let's turn now to our political analyst, Matthew Dowd, who for once joins us in person. <laughs> Such a not, for, not for once, but unusually. Yeah, I'm just trying to make you feel guilty on these New Year's. Um, so happy this, New Year's to you. Happy New Year to you, my friend. It's really nice to see you. Thank so you. Uh, this week, big news, the Democrats are going to take over the House. What does that mean for this ongoing shutdown? Is that likely to change the game in a meaningful way? Well, it puts the Democrats in a much more powerful position now that the Speaker Pelosi is going to be speaker in this, and the Democrats have a huge advantage in the House now. I don't think it changes that dynamics. I think both sides are dug in, and I think the president has said he's going to keep the government shut down, keep the government shut down until he gets what he wants. But it doesn't seem like Speaker Pelosi or M Minority Leader Schumer are going to move at all. So what has to happen for them to reach a deal to bring this shutdown to an end? The president has to move. I mean, interestingly, when you look at back at back at past presidents who have lost badly in midterms, President Obama, President Clinton, and President Reagan, all of them understood that their base wasn't enough, and they decided to go towards consensus and go towards compromise. The president has done the exact opposite that, of that after a badly lost midterm. He has to move towards consensus. He has to move towards compromise and understand that he doesn't represent today the majority of the country.
And, and Matt, as we mentioned, the new year brings a new Congress and a new reality for President Trump. What does that mean for the rest of his first term and his broader agenda? I think it makes it very difficult, and I don't think the president is prepared both emotionally and administratively for what he's about to deal with. Uh, having the Democrats in charge of the House is going to change the dynamic completely. It's going to make they're going to put in charge of all committees, investigations. They're going to have subpoena power. They're going to have the run of the a run of the House actually. And I think the president is not prepared for what that means and what he's about to face with an aggressive Congress. The other dynamic this year is we've got all these Democrats who are about to announce they're running for president. We could see upwards of two dozen. So how does how does that play out over the course of the year? Well, it, that's going to begin. I think the Democratic National Committee has already set debates to start in June. So six months from now will be the first debate. They how are they going to put those people on the same stage? Well, they've decided they're going to bifurcate it and have two separate stages. To me, if you look at the Democrats running, it's basically there's going to be four lanes and the Democrats have to compete in one of those lanes, which is an ideological lane, which would be more progressive, the old, the experience lane, reliable, which would be more like Biden, the fresh face lane, which is is like Beto, and then I call another lane the Time's Up lane, which is the women candidates. And pay attention to the women candidates because one of the women candidates, whether it's Elizabeth Warren or somebody else, is going to jump up to that top tier. So it's not going to just be Beto, Bernie, and Biden. Full Employment Act for political analysts. Uh, thank you, Matt. <laughs> Looking We're forward to a new year. It. Thank you, as Thanks. are we. Appreciate it. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.